Good evening. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Ken. Tonight we're going to continue the lesson on Genesis. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 27. If you want to see tonight's notes, click on the lower left hand corner where the tab says notes. If you click in the notes, then you can scroll through the notes. If you want to print them off, you can uh, click on that, save it as a PDF, and then print it off. And then you can come back and you can follow right along. So, let's get everything you need. Get your Bible, get your lesson, open up to Genesis chapter 27, and maybe you want a cup of coffee. Genesis chapter 27. When people say that the Bible is boring, boy, you know, they haven't read some of this stuff. This would make a great movie, wouldn't it? Jacob deceives Esau. So here we have uh, Isaac, his father. Isaac feels that he will soon die. Now, uh, his eyesight is almost gone. And maybe that's why he's feeling old. He feels like he's going to not make it. Uh, and now that being said, maybe we need to be careful that we don't go too much by our feelings. Okay, so we may feel like something's going to happen or feel like something we want to do or not do something. And, you know, we, we may just need to take a little break from that. So he calls in Esau, his oldest son, and he said, make me some savory food just the way that I like it. You know how I love it. He said, then I will bless you before I die. And he tells Esau that he's going to. He, I'm about ready to die. So Isaac was 137 years old at this time. Now, he would live for another 43 years. So he may think he's got one foot in the grave, but he really doesn't. Uh, now, he may be wanting to get this done uh, before he uh, loses his uh, faculties. Maybe he's pushing this. I'm not sure, but he wants to do this, and he, he's determined. Now... Question number two, Isaac seemed to love the game Esau prepared for him. However, the text indicates something else is going on here also. He was proud, as every dad is, of their son's and daughter's accomplishments. But he was proud that Esau was a great hunter. And so he was really proud of those hunting capabilities. And the fact that it came with some juicy food. Well, that was just better. Now, we will learn later at the end of our lesson today. So, but I need to, I need to grab all of that and pull it to the front. Okay. We learn later in the story that he couldn't tell the difference between game and home cooked. Now, what does that say? Uh, it might say that not only was his uh, sight going, but maybe his taste was going so too also but it isn't isn't it funny about our taste how we like something or we don't like something or when we think that someone has uh, something special you know uh, when our kids were growing up one of our kids they didn't when we had squash oh they wouldn't eat squash but we visited uh best aunt and uh, they just they just ate up the squash like crazy. And uh, so my wife said, you, hmm, you know, you like Aunt Nancy's squash. And uh, then one of our children, they didn't like uh, Oriental food. And uh, so and when we would go out for Oriental, we'd have to go across the street and get a Happy Meal and get that first and then take it with us into the Oriental place. And... Uh, so years went by, and uh, our child was about probably nine or ten, and uh, we went out to a, a Oriental restaurant, and it was a buffet, and we were uh, getting our food, and uh, our son he uh, found something on the buffet, and he you know, took a bunch of stuff off the buffet, and he came back, and he ate it, and. 
then he went back for some more and uh, so uh, our old our son was uh, born in uh, Canada and so my wife said to him says uh, how is it that you like this you usually don't like oriental and he said oh uh, this is the food they fed me when I was born at the hospital and so he thought it was Canadian food he didn't think that it was oriental food but it's it's amazing how that when we think something is one thing how that we like it and if we think it's something else we're not so well now remember in our story and this plays right into and this is an important part of this chapter remember Isaac loved and showed his love more towards Esau and Rebecca loved Jacob and showed her love more towards Jacob God had told you Rebecca remember that the older would serve the younger and that was before the boys were even born Isaac knew the prophecy and still he was determined to bless Esau now that gives us pause to think hmm Isaac what are you doing you know what the uh, prophecy was uh, you know sometimes we as guys uh, our wives tell us something and until we see it ourselves we you know we act badly and we say oh I don't believe it I have to see it with myself for myself uh, maybe maybe that's what or maybe he was really determined that he was going to bless even though that's what the prophecy said he was going to bless Esau now while this whole conversation was going on Rebecca was uh, she was in the other part of the tent and she was listening to what was going on this conversation between Isaac and Esau now Esau has already sold his birthright to Jacob for stew and he doesn't tell his father that he has despised his birthright and that he sold it now that's Esau's issue Rebecca she plots to deceive Isaac with Jacob's help she has Jacob go get two kid goats real quick from the flock and she'll prepare them the way that Isaac likes remember <laughs> He can't tell the difference between game and the way that Rebecca uh, is going to cook it. Uh, said, then your father will bless you before he dies. Now, this here, this shows that Rebecca is not trusting the Lord. She's determined that she's going to make what the Lord told her happen. Little side note. God tells you something's going to happen. You don't have to make it happen. Okay? God can work it out. Now, at first, question number four, Jacob is not a ready participant in this deception. Now, he's not a kid. Uh, the boys were born when, and I say boys, the boys were born when Isaac was 60. He's now 137. So he's what, some 70 years later? So these guys are 70 years old. And uh, so Jacob's not ready to do this. He says, you know, Esau is a hairy man. You know, he's got hair. When he was born, he looked like a garment. And here I am, I'm smooth skinned. And his dad might want to touch me. And if he touches me, oh, I'm dead meat. He's going to find out I am not Esau. And that's going to bring a curse on me and not a blessing. And Rebecca said, no, remember, she's determined she's going to make this work. She said she would take the curse on herself. Now, we can't do that. If if you mess up, you got to bear the responsibility for it. If I mess up, i got to take the responsibility for it. I can say, if you mess up, I'll take the credit or the responsibility. But ultimately, you're going to pay the price. But she says to him, just do as I say. I got it all figured out, but obey me. And being his mother, well, then question number five, Rebecca, she just by coincidence, she had some of Esau's clothes with her. Um, and uh, she has been preparing for this day. Now, these those clothes smelled like Esau those of you that are parents uh, 
you can probably identify with this as uh, your kids clothes and uh, sometimes you need to go in and take them and go wash them okay so she always had it the ready she was ready for this day and so she took those clothes and she put goat skin on Jacob's hands and tied them and put his clothes on him. And then she, she put uh, goat skin around uh, Jacob's neck and, and tied fastened that on there. And then when the food was ready, she sent Jacob in to his father. Now, question number six, Jacob deceives his father with one lie after another. You know, that's the thing about lying, isn't it? You tell one lie and then you get a, another lie and another lie and another lie. One time there was a, a little boy that was testifying in court and uh, to the uh, prosecutor, you know, he was, he said, your dad, someone told you to what to say today, didn't they? And the little boy said, yes. And he said, who was it? He says, it was my dad. He says, yeah. And what did he tell you to say? And the little boy said, he told me to tell the truth. He thought that he was going to say something that would uh, be what his father wanted him to say. But, you know, when you're always telling the truth, you don't have to worry about what you said. So when Jacob speaks, Isaac asks him, who are you, my son? And uh, Jacob says, I am Esau, your firstborn. Rise up, come and eat. Bless me. And now Isaac suspects that something is awry. He, you know, he, 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 you know, he says, so he starts off with, how come you back so soon? What, what's going on? You know, and Jacob says, because the Lord, your God, brought it to me. Now, I want you to see something here. Notice that Jacob says, because the Lord, your God, brought it to me. We're not, it, in this passage, it, right now, uh, we're not sure how close Jacob was to serving the Lord at this point. And so, you know, if he's lying, he doesn't want to give credit that the Lord, my God, has helped me. He put it, the Lord, your God, brought it to me. And then Isaac asked just exactly what that Jacob was afraid was going to happen. Isaac asked for him to come closer to see if it really is Esau. And you now Jacob was right that his father would want to touch him. And then Isaac felt the goat hair on Jacob, and he said, No, the voice is Jacob, but the hands are Esau. And then he asks again, Are you really my son Esau? And now uh, he ate the food, and then he uh, told, told, him, told Jacob, even though he was pretending to be Esau, he said, here, come here, give me a kiss, kiss your father, and so he did, and uh, when he did, Isaac pulled him in, and he could feel the hair on the back of Jacob's neck, and he smelled the clothes, <gasps> and it's Esau. So here's the blessing in question number eight, verses 27 to 29. The smell of my son is like the smell of of a field blessed by God. Have you ever smelled grass after a rain? Oh, that's a wonderful smell. He says, may God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. May he give you plenty of grain and plenty of wine. Let peoples serve you and be master over your brother. Let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be those who curse you, and blessed are those who bless you. Now, I find it curious that Isaac slips in here, let your mother's sons bow down to you. So far, we only see two sons. 
Maybe he's thinking that it's possible that Rebecca might have another child. So he's, you know, he, he play, laying it out there. Question number nine. Jacob slips away, goes back to his mother. He takes the dishes back. Whew. Well, a little while later, Esau returned from hunting. And he has prepared the savory food just the way dad likes it. And he took it into his father. Arise, father, eat, and then bless me. And Isaac says, who are you, my son? Who are you? And Esau says, I'm Esau, your firstborn son. Isaac suddenly realizes what has happened. He has been deceived. Now, the text says that Isaac trembled exceedingly, that he was just shaking, almost shaking violently. The reason being, he knows that he's guilty of trying to give what belonged to Jacob to give it away. Jake, Isaac knew the prophecy, yet he was trying to give it to Esau. Now, he has not been successful, and he must give a secondary blessing to Esau. Esau realizes that he was being held accountable for selling his birthright. You know, all of this did not justify Rebecca and Jacob's deception. They did not trust God to bring this about in his time. But Esau... He, he is so angry. Now, Esau's blessing was confirmation of the prophecy. And so Isaac goes on. You will dwell in the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. By your sword shall you live. Your life will not be easy. You shall serve your brother. And he says, when you become reckless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Now, Esau's anger, verses 40, 41 and 42. Esau swore that when his father died, he's going to kill Jacob. He was so, he was really, really angry. Now, in, in that anger, you know, Isaac may have doubted that God really spoke to Rebekah. Esau, he sold his birthright. So why is he so angry? When Isaac said he was going to bless Esau, Esau should have fessed up. I sold it to Jacob. Maybe now Esau thinks he will put one over on Jacob. Because he says here, his name really is Jacob or supplanter or trickster or rascal. You know, it's, it's so funny. People do something wrong, and then they get angry at others around them. Everyone else's fault. They don't take responsibility. So, Rebecca, she hears of Esau's vow. I'm sure they probably heard that vow in the next county. <laughs> you know, he probably bellowed. And so she brings, he calls for Jacob, and she says, flee to my brother in Haran until Esau's anger cools, and then I will send and bring you home from there. Now, Rebecca, question number 13, Rebecca also hoped for Jacob to take a wife of her family back in Haran. Esau's wives were a constant grief to Rebecca. She says, what good will my life be if Jacob takes a wife like them? So Jacob fled from his brother to Haran. Well, that's our lesson for this evening. So glad that you were with us tonight. Let's close in prayer. Father, we are reminded that you do speak to us and you give us promises. Lord, in this lesson, we learn that we do not have to help you out. You are able to bring things about in your timing. And it doesn't go well when we try to do stuff in our own thoughts and reasoning. 
Help us to do that which is right. Lord, we pray for each one here today. May the grace of God be theirs. Pray that you would strengthen those that are weak. Pray for those that are sick, Lord, you would bring a touch upon them. Watch over us this week, This week we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here. We hope that you will join us on Saturday for Saturday School. Have a wonderful week. God bless you.